Okay, so um, uh, what was the name of your album? Landing. Landing. Okay. Because it was a, it was like a joke, like Booyah Moon Landing. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> Stupid subtle pun. <laughs> It's Patrick Beatty Reviews, the number one for news. It's Patrick Beatty Reviews, number one for news. Yeah. Tune in. Get up. Yeah. What's up? Keep the change, you filthy animal. It's the best pun if it's subtle. Yeah. That's what makes it a pun. What's up, everybody? I'm here with Steven Allen. He's the lead singer of Booyah Moon. You can check out their new album, Landing, on iTunes and on Spotify. We're going to talk about Daredevil because if there's any Daredevil fan that I know, it's this guy. Yeah. Yeah, I've been a huge Daredevil fan. I was kind of disappointed in season two, and so I was really excited and looking forward to season three when I saw the first trailer. What do you think of season one? Like, we're going from Ben Affleck's Daredevil all the way into, like, this new series, yeah. and, and it's it's been around for a while, so I guess it's not new, but first season for me it gave me a, a standard yeah, that I for sure. think that they met. Yeah, well, I think that it set a standard not only for future seasons of Daredevil, but for all of those Marvel Netflix shows, because it was the first. And then when Jessica Jones season one came out, everyone was like, okay, this is like really building up. And then we've had kind of like hits and misses along the way since then. But Daredevil, is, is he's back, and Kingpin is out on the streets, yeah. and shit is going down. Well, one of the interesting things about this season from the very beginning is that Daredevil is back, and Matt Murdock, in a way, isn't. Um, yeah. He's really broken after the events of The Defenders. He says early on in one of the first episodes that he would rather die as Daredevil than live as Matt Murdock. And so that's kind of the thematic element of this season, is him dealing with this complex identity that he has, which has always been, for me, what's been most interesting about Daredevil, where most heroes have two sides, their hero side, their secret identity. Daredevil's always been interesting to me because he has three different things that he's warring with. He has the law of a vigilante, the law of a lawyer, and the law of a Catholic, which are all very different. And it's never been more divisive for him to like no. choose what side to be on. You've got a slew of new uh, supporting characters coming mm -hmm. in. The uh, nurse that is at the church, terrific mm -hmm. as it. And in fact, all the supporting characters that came into season three, I, I couldn't find really a flaw. In, no, in, in they the introduced a new character with Agent Nadim, or Nadine, I can't remember for sure. He got a large portion of the first episode actually and I was sitting there kind of wondering you know who's this guy how is he going to play out in the in the entire season and that's maybe one fault for this season if there is one is that it does start out kind of slow and then the existing side characters like Karen and Foggy come back and I think they're utilized much better I feel like yeah. season two one of my issues was that Karen was largely an obstacle like she was in the way a lot and she was yeah. um, to, to use a, a phrase my friend used she was a, a, a fair with her friend like as soon as things went bad she was like I'm out of here what did you think of the Karen episode. I thought it was great. I think it's episode 10 or 11, which is, this is kind of a thing that some of these Netflix shows are doing now, is they'll have like one episode almost at the end where they focus on another character. I personally enjoyed that episode because I like being able to dive into these characters a little bit more. It's a breath. It, yeah. it, it's, it's a beat that right. you have in between the craziness. And it usually happens when there's a big like jaw dropping mm -hmm. breakthrough that happens. There are several, not even necessarily plot beats, but like scenes and Easter eggs from the Daredevil graphic novel and the run called Born Again. In that run Karen Page gone away for a little bit after she finds out that Matt Murdock is Daredevil and she gets involved in a lot of really shady stuff like drugs and pornography and she comes back and she's kind of broken. In this series they've kind of hinted at Karen having a darker past and having these things happening and this is the first time we really get to see where Karen comes from and I think it gives a lot more context to where she comes from and it makes the, the viewer care more about her as a character. So MVP of the season who would you give that to? I mean it's gotta be Vincent D'Onofrio. Closely followed I'd say by Charlie Cox as Matt Murdock. Wilson Bethel, you might have to fact check me on that, who plays Benjamin Poindexter or Bullseye in this season. Mm. It was a real breath of fresh air after the adaptation we do not speak of, uh, the uh, Ben Affleck. Cut to Daredevil. the clip. These series do best, which again, is just creating characters and villains that are interesting and deep. And we get full sections of episodes that are basically just about him. And we get more about his background and his mental state and his fragility. And to see, you know, how one person kind of takes that, it's really satisfying. And the fight scenes are, are really cool. One scene in particular that's been getting buzz is another long shot hallway fight scene that's 11 minutes long. And hallway fights are, are just infamous when it comes yeah. to Netflix Marvel series. Yeah. And that one's because not a Because they don't have a budget, they want to fight. 
they're gonna do it in the hallway and that's yeah. how it goes. That scene's so impressive to me in several scenes because of this blurring delineation between Matt Murdock and Daredevil, he's out of costume a lot. Even the even the black suit he doesn't wear as often. We get to see Charlie Cox's face in fights a lot more, which is really cool because he does such a great job of looking blind. And those are the things that, that really, for me, make him the MVP. Like, I, I cannot understand how easy and effortless it seems to him, but how much effort I think he's putting into yeah, the role. Yeah, for sure. Like, Charlie Cox is Daredevil. Right. And if there's really any character that I would want implemented into the MCU, I think this season just proved that yeah. for Daredevil, that he could sure. be included in a world where a Spider-Man is. When you mentioned Spider-Man, I mean, that was always one of my favorite team-ups as a kid was when Daredevil and Spider-Man would team up. That would be something that would be really cool. I highly doubt it will happen, <laughs> particularly with Spider-Man because of his weird positioning with Sony and all well, that. Well, if they won't even let his famous villain into his own movie, right. the last thing you're gonna do is put in Daredevil. Overall, great job to, to everybody that did this show, and I really hope for a season four. Yeah, I mean, it looks we'll, like they're we'll setting see. up for it, and I think it's done well enough that it'll get it. I, I'm more nervous than you are about that, I suppose. Just well, because of what happened with Luke Cage and Iron Fist, yeah. I, I'm nervous for all of Marvel's yeah. properties that are attached that's, to Netflix with their Disney fair. streaming service coming that's out. That's fair, yeah. But uh, don't listen to us. What did you guys think about this? Leave a comment down below. If you've seen Daredevil, let me know about season one, season three. Please go and check out Steven in Booyah Moon, Spotify, iTunes. I will link it down below. Yeah, you can also go to BooyahMoon.com. And there's swag, and they'll give you money. I don't agree with that. <laughs> Thank you guys as always so much for watching and I will see you at the next review.